Okay, so today's discussion, the discussion on the table, is God moral? Or rather, is the God of the Bible a moral God or guy? Is he a moral person? Is he good? Or is he mean? Is he mean? Does he command genocides and do all sorts of terrible things and condone slavery? He's bad, wicked, cruel. So, let's discuss. If you are not an atheist, the very idea of the subject may strike you as slightly absurd. But, <clears throat> in fact, it is a common argument in the atheist circles. So much so that I think I see it every single day. Um, yeah, pretty much every single day I see somebody point out that either... God himself, as the, uh, the God of the Bible, is not good, is not moral, and they have scriptures to back them up. You know, um, I don't know all of them. I know some of them. Here, God commanded a genocide. In this scripture, uh, God condoned slavery. And uh, the argument being that, that God himself is not moral or good. He's cruel. Now, to be quite honest with you... <clears throat> I do not have a lot of respect for this line of, of argument. Normally, I do not engage with it. Why is that? Because I don't honestly believe that the people presenting the argument have actual ethical, ethical quandaries or ethical concerns with the, with the teachings of Jesus Christ. I think they're playing a bit of a game. They're hair splitting. They're taking some, some scriptures that are actually there now, the, to the atheist, those scriptures are really there. I'll give you that. And they really say what you, they say, but they're taking them out of context. Well, not necessarily out of context. Because if you say out of context, they'll go, ah, ha, ha, here's the big excuse, it's all out of context. They're not taking them out of context of what they mean within the text. Usually the scriptures they say point to an immoral or a cruel God are actually troubling scriptures. They, they appear to mean or seem to mean exactly what the atheist is saying they seem to mean. So we have no disagreement there. They don't necessarily seem to be good in any sense of the word. What I mean, and they're not taking them out of context, what they are doing is hair splitting. They are being legalistic, okay? And that is a term that we Christians use. Now, Atheist, keep in mind, I am called a Christian, not a Bible Onian or a Bible follower or a Bible swallower. <laughs> you might call me that, but that is not what my, my religion is called. It is called Christianity. I am a follower and a practicer of the teachings of Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus Christ was God in the flesh, and I practice and I am a disciple of his teachings. Now, one of the things that we Christians do, and every single one of you, why I do not necessarily respect the arguments, is that every single one of the atheists who present them know a little bit or a lot of bit about Christianity. And they have very little ethical quandaries or moral concerns about the actual teachings of Jesus Christ. And, and that's usually not the gist of the argument. They're being legalistic to a certain degree. Indeed, what legalistic is, something, is a term that we Christians use, and we use it with each other. For example, many of you have pointed out there are scriptures condemning the eating of shellfish. Okay? I, see, I have seen those scriptures, and yet I still, see, I still eat shellfish. Now I'm in a restaurant, and I'm with a Christian friend of mine, and he says, well, you're eating shellfish. Bible condemns it. And I will say to him, okay, Within the context of my own faith walk and my own belief system, you are being legalistic. Everything in the Old Testament is truly scripture, but it is to be interpreted in light of the spirit and the intent of the New Testament and the revealed truth of the New Testament. The Bible itself tells you not to be legalistic. It says... The spirit brings life, but the letter of the law kills. In other words, don't hang on every single word, 
but try to practice the spirit and the intent of the whole of the scripture. That is what I do as a practicing Christian. I look to the spirit and the intent of the whole of the scripture. Are there troubling scriptures in the Bible? Yes. Do they tend to point to an immoral God? Yes. Uh, and I'll be 100% honest about that. Now, why am I not that interested in that fact? Because the overall, I have absolutely no moral qualities whatsoever with the teachings of Jesus Christ. And indeed, most of what I read in the Bible, I read the Bible often, and I read scriptures constantly. And if you take the... the, the the whole of the Bible and the thousands upon thousands of scriptures, there are thousands of perfectly moral, perfectly righteous, perfectly good scriptures that if you practice and you commit yourself to, will turn you into a much better person, morally. Morally. And there are very few people on this planet, including atheists, who argue against the moral teachings of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, I've only known one. I can only think of one atheist who I've ever seen don't do it. And I've watched a lot of atheist videos. And that would be Christopher Hitchens. He used to do it. He used to go, Jesus and Christ himself, his teachings were immoral. And it was really amazing to me. And he tried to rationalize how they were immoral. And it used to make no sense to me. It was completely discombobulated and nutty. But he's the only person I've ever seen do it. Every other person I know, atheist or not, has commonly recognized the teachings of Jesus Christ as being perfectly moral. Indeed, most atheists I know even use the teachings of Jesus Christ to point out to conservatives that they are not in line with the morality of the Bible. And they do it and I applaud it. They'll say stuff like, that which you have done to the least of my children you have done unto me, meaning that we should help the poor. And they're perfectly, they're perfectly, they're using the scriptures correctly within the context. They recognize they're not from another planet where there's no Christianity practiced and most of them have read the Bible and most of them know Christianity. Or most of you, rather. That's why I don't necessarily respect the argument. It doesn't look to me like you're honestly wrestling with the ethics of Christianity so much so as trying to be kind of smart Alex, Finding some scriptures here and there to condemn the whole which is legalistic. Now, am I troubled by those scriptures? Not necessarily. Why? Because to me, the question is academic. Okay? It's a very little interest to me. If Jesus Christ himself, if I were reading the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount, and he were saying to do things that I knew in my heart were immoral, yeah, then I might actually have a problem with the teachings of Christianity. But that does not occur. I read the Bible frequently and often, and the teachings are not, are completely consistent with any understanding of morality. If you follow them wholeheartedly, you can accept them wholeheartedly without reservation. And if you do, they will make you a better person, according to almost everyone you know. I don't know any person who said I've become worse since I've become Christian. Everybody, bar none, has says I've become much better much more gentle, much more patient. They, the, scriptures tell, the scriptures tell you to be more merciful. They tell you to be more kind frequently, more loving, more caring. Things that nobody argues with. Save one person I can think of, and that was Frederick Nietzsche. And it kind of drove him nuts. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually what drove him nuts, but you could argue that that's what drove him nuts. He's the only person, the only philosopher I can think of off the top of my head that used to argue that, that the teachings of Christianity were immoral were morally, you know, evil. Now, some of the, the new, you know, let's, let's get the Bible based on morality, you are using scriptures that are really there, but they are small parts of an enormous whole. I don't know the exact number of troubling scriptures. You know, if one of you wants to po po post it to me, the total number, I'll check it out. My guess is there are about three or four hundred tops. Maybe more, but that's my guess. There are something like 35,000 scriptures that you can practice wholeheartedly without reservation, that you can read and study, and they will make you a much better person. Honest. 100% promise you that's true. And let's just take this, the foundational teachings of Jesus Christ himself. Okay? 
Actually, I promise you 100% that's true, so much so that I would say to you, if every single person in this country who calls himself a Christian practiced Christianity the way Jesus Christ taught you to practice it, this country would be transformed overnight into a much better place. If every person in your hometown practiced the teachings of Jesus Christ, your hometown would be transformed overnight into a kind of heaven on earth. That is what the moral teachings of Jesus Christ are supposed to show you. They're supposed to show you a vision of heaven realized on earth, accessible to human beings, accessible to human beings, realized in the flesh of a human being so it is accessible to human beings. Now, I don't know anybody, myself included, who rises to the standard that is laid before them. Let's just take one, one scripture. Someone strikes you on the cheek, turn to them the other cheek. I don't know anybody who actually does that, myself included. I may recognize in my heart that that is the right moral standard to, uh, to, to try to rise to as a Christian, but do I do it? <laughs> try me out. Strike me on the cheek. Yeah. I don't think so. Am I going to turn to you the other cheek? Yeah, try it out. You see what I'm getting at? No, I'm not going to. I recognize that it is the right standard to adhere to and it is morally superior, but I cannot even always live up to the highest ideals of my Christianity. Very few people can. And the only thing I am pointing out to you, the atheists, is that very few of you actually have any moral objections with truly practiced Christianity. You would actually really, really morally respect an, a, a person who truly tried to embody the teachings of Jesus Christ. You would actually love that person. They would be good to you, and they would be honest, and they would have integrity, and they would be meek. And they would be of, at your assistance. So it's not the teachings of Jesus Christ in any way, shape, or form that I have, do I have any moral quandaries with whatsoever. So the question becomes academic. Are there troubling scriptures in the Bible? Yes. But I, I take it as an article of faith that there are perfectly sound, reasonable apologetics applied to those. And every once in a while, I'll be interested enough to investigate, and I'll read some of them. Some of them are terrible, but I'm sure some of them are really, really, really good. Most of the ones that I've come across are terrible. I'll give you that, okay? There are some weird things going on in the Bible, and there are weird passages. But I take it as an article of faith. First of all, the Scripture commands me to trust the Lord with all my heart and cling not to my own understanding, which I do easily. I don't need to understand why not every word of the Bible seems to line up perfectly with every other word. It doesn't really bother me because I find the, the whole of the Bible as received as a whole, studied and received properly to be perfectly consistent with anything in the deepest part of my being before I was a Christian and after would I find I would find it all morally, completely, and 100% correct. And I, I put it to you that so would you. If you saw a practicing Christian practicing the tenets and the, and the principles of Jesus Christ, the way Jesus Christ intended them to be practiced and lived out, you would immediately respect the moral integrity of that person. 100%. We are seeing a corrupted form of Christianity in the world we live in today. We are seeing humans trying to practice out the divine. And it doesn't always work correctly. But that doesn't mean that the, the goal, and that there's something wrong with the goal and the vision. Okay? Now, I think a lot of you understand that. I think what I just said makes complete and utter sense to many of you. That's why I don't really respect the argument. Because I don't think it's coming from a place of honesty. I don't think it's coming from a place of I actually morally object or ethically object to the teachings of Jesus Christ. I really honestly don't. So that's, that's where we are with that.